don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. If you do so, you have the chance to win the brand new iPhone 12 Pro. The happy winner will be announced in the community section tab January 2021. Good luck. Welcome or welcome back on Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking here from Vienna and joining me today from uh, Zurich or close to Zurich is uh, René Weber, luxury analyst from Bank von Tobel. Welcome, René. Hi, Alexander. Good to see oh. you again. Yes, good to see you. <laughs> How are you? Everything okay so far? Yes, I'm back in home office, uh, but that's okay. We are used to it now. Yeah, I, 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 I do the same. I'm in my office and uh, yeah. The background is a picture, of course. I'm not uh, uh, flying uh, overhead the uh, famous Wiener Stephansdom, the St. Stephen's Cathedral. That's just a picture. <laughs> and and it's, it's not from today, I guess. No, it's not from today. No, but we have to bring some sunshine into it's yes, gray and yes. gray out. <laughs> it's gray and gray today. Her name, Gray and Gray, um, seems also to be a little bit uh, what we could say about uh, the watch industry in the moment. So what are the latest developments uh, in exports and so on? Give us an update, please. Yes, we just had the number uh, uh, this week for September. And once again, we had really confirmation what we were expecting. There is one country which still is growing and it's an easy one. That's mainland China. Mainland China in uh, in September was strongly up by 79%. So that, that's clearly the outperformance. But all the other ones, they are still strongly down. And we have now for September as a whole, we still have minus uh, 12%. And of course, the markets which are st still depending very much on Chinese tourists, especially here in Europe, they are down by 25 or even 30%. Uh, also, some of the uh, Asian countries like Japan, like Singapore, they also are declining by more than 25%. So therefore, the trend continues, the Chinese stay at home and therefore mainland China is benefiting, whereas the other markets still feel the negative impact. Do you have the impression that some of the European countries could mobilize their local clients uh, to compensate a little bit the lack of uh, Chinese tourists? Yeah, that's depending very much on how important the Chinese tourists are. So, for example, here in Switzerland, we talk about probably 70% of total sales were for Chinese tourists, and therefore it's not possible that uh, the, the locals can catch up uh, that uh, situation. On the other hand, and that's a, a good example, is the UK. In the UK, we're just talking about roughly 25% being uh, Chinese, Chinese. They are almost to the to back to the level what they had before. So, for example, also in September, UK was just down minus 10%. And therefore, yes, if you have not too much tourists, which is a game for UK, then you can can, can cut, catch up part of that. Um, in the last conversations we had, you were always, always predicting a total uh, a loss or, or decrease of about 25% uh, uh, for the entire industry. Now the next lockups are coming. France is going to uh, uh, a lockdown. Uh, Germany, we in Austria are supposed to follow. Switzerland probably will also follow. So Spain is... Uh, uh, how do you see the situation? Um, do you still hold? Do you still think those 25% minus are realistic or is it worse now? No, I think for the full year, it should be roughly in, in, in the ballpark of minus 25%. If you look to the first nine months, we have minus 28%. And each month, we are getting a little bit uh, better. When we talk about the lockdown, it's mainly here in Europe, but uh, for example, in China, it's nothing. And China really is, is the, the growing part in there. And therefore, I still feel quite comfortable that uh, 2020 should come in roughly at minus 25%. Um, I've been recently talking to some CEOs of brands and they were all pretty uh, enthusiastic saying or telling me, okay, once the thing is over, once the vaccine is there, once uh, COVID is under control, we will see an, an, a tremendous uh, catch up uh, situation where people are really going to spend lots of money also in luxury goods. Do you agree with such predictions or do you think is it too optimistic? I'm also optimistic that 2021 will see uh, quite good growth. Probably not 
that we come back just in one year to the level what we had before. But as we had really more than two months of closures and also mean production closures, which we never had before, and I assume that will not happen again in 2021, I expect that you will see growth of roughly 20%. Of course, we will still have the same issue that Europe is not having the Chinese tourists and also some of, of the Asian countries. And therefore, again, the, the Chinese market will become even more important than it's already the case now. Now, for the first time, we see in 2020, and that's really something <laughs> which is a, a historical event, China will be for the first time the number one market for the Swiss watch industry. Hong Kong was that for more than 10 years and Hong Kong will fall back to uh, right now it's number three, but obviously that will even fall back further. There is a specific development behind it. Can you, can you explain us what's going on on the Chinese market? What are the Chinese doing that Hong Kong is dying and they are growing? Yeah, on one hand, of course, the Chinese tourists are not coming to uh, Hong Kong anymore. And I just have the new numbers from that's from September. September 2020, there were 6,226 Chinese traveling to Hong Kong. The year before, September 2019, there were 2.4 million Chinese traveling there. So therefore, it's minus 99.7%. So they do not, have, <laughs> you know, there are no Chinese tourists anymore in China. And what China have in changed Kong, in the- You mean in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> what where, China, where are they now? Where are they buying? There is a new, there's a new uh, duty-free zone that has been established. So tell me about it, please. Yes, uh, I think it, uh, the Chinese government decided that in Hainan, which is an island south of uh, China, uh, they have changed their the duty-free regulations. In the past, it was just allowed to buy something for 3,000 Swiss francs. Now, since the 1st of July, it moved up to 13, 14,000 Swiss francs, or 100,000 remembies. And therefore, it's quite easy now to buy even a, a Rolex for 10,000 Swiss francs at that location. You do not have to travel anymore to Hong Kong. You can even stay in, in China itself. It's an island, yes, but it's just part of uh, uh, China. And we have seen the first numbers now. Uh, the company is called China Duty Free Group which is responsible for that uh, airport or that whole location down there. Uh, they have seen in the, f in the month July till September an increase of more than 200%. And so it clearly shows now that location will become a very important location for the luxury goods industry, not just for the Swiss watch industry, it's also for the luxury goods industry as a whole. How did uh, how did uh, the watch industry react? Have they been establishing the businesses there already, or are they still working on it? Do you have any information about that? Yeah, uh, up to now it was just the duty free store, and of course, as there was just three thousand Swiss franc allowed, there were not a lot of Swiss watches in there. And I think a very good reaction was done by, uh, by the Richemont Group. They just have started the Watch and Wonders over there in uh, in October which continues into uh, November. And so I think you will see a lot of brands now moving into that space. And it's already announced that China Duty Free uh, Group will open up an even bigger location. Right now, it's just close to the airport. Uh, but it looks like that there will be a China Duty Free Group downtown location in the future. And so, yes, that will clearly compensate the situation what we see in Hong Kong. How does this uh, affect uh, the ranking or the situation of the big retailers? There was, uh, what was the, the big retailer called in Hong Kong? Hang Daily, I think. Uh, yeah, Hang Daily is one of them. So you, you will see the list of all the, the top retailers with our estimates for 2019 in terms of sales. And Bucho is with, on that list uh, the clear number one with 1.8 billion Swiss franc in sales, watch sales, I have to say. They also sell something in, in jewelry. And uh, then the number two group is called Xinyu in China. Uh, of course, they are benefiting. And then if you just look for the Hong Kong companies, the number one there is Emperor. It's the number six in the world. And uh, they they are 
having currently declines of more than 60%. Then you also have the, num the name you mentioned, Hang Daily Hong Kong. Uh, they are roughly number 10 in the world. They just mentioned that they will close down their stores in Hong Kong. And that's yeah, also they're important. They're because, yeah, the, uh, Hang Daily is the one which does not have any Rolex and does not have any Patex. Oh. Okay. And so uh, in an emperor, they have Rolex and Patek, and therefore they will uh, continue to be there. But yes, for Hang Daily, it looks like it's getting more difficult to, to have good business in Hong Kong. So we will see the new uh, developing group, uh, uh, airport uh, duty-free group, uh, appearing very soon in that ranking as one of the big uh, future retailers. Yes, I think that will clearly uh, be the case. And I think when you look to the, the numbers for 2019, for example, Bucho will be much lower than they have uh, the figures than they had in 2019. It's also the case for the group which is in uh, Germany, Wempe, they also will have uh, lower numbers. But of course, the most negative impact will clearly be seen in the, in the companies which are mainly based in Hong Kong. Interesting, interesting developments. And uh, it's like it's looking like uh, if China is really drying out Hong Kong and, and closing down the, uh, the former supermarket of the Chinese uh, and reopening a proper one <laughs> now somewhere else. Yes. And I think you see that also in, in Vienna, aren't you, that you don't have any Chinese tourists anymore? Very, very few. Uh, we saw in summer uh, more private uh, Chinese traveling uh, coming, uh, but uh, the tourist groups are no, not there in the moment. Absolutely not. Yeah, we yeah. there's a big lack of tourists. But not only the Chinese, we are missing the Europeans, the Americans love to come to Vienna, and also lots of Russians. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not not the best yeah. year 2020. Not at all. <laughs> No, no, that's the case. Uh, before closing our little conversation, Rene, I want to also um, uh, talk about a report we just uh, both have uh, received uh, from Deloitte. And right. there's an interesting uh, things they are highlighting. That's the development of uh, the smart watch versus uh, the entry price level of the Swiss watch industry. So smart watches went up 23%. Whilst the price, the, the comparable price level of Swiss watches went down 20%. And this is dramatic. Can you just uh, explain us a little bit or comment on this, what you see here? Yeah, it's even the case that they compare it with the full Swiss watch industry. And when we look, for example, the nine month figures, as I mentioned, for the total, we had minus 28%. The low end, which we talk about up to five to 800 Swiss francs. Uh, they are down by 40%. And yes, the smartwatch is up by 20%. And I think that's exactly the situation what we already talked uh, some months ago, that health plays an even more important role inside of the smartwatches. And with that whole COVID story, that, that part of the smartwatch story, health, that will continue to be the driver of that uh, that industry and therefore i still believe that smartwatch will continue to gain market share whereas the lower mid-end in the swiss watch industry will have problems in having something which makes sense to compete against the smartwatch industry i do not have a, a negative situation for for the high-end uh, watch industry here in switzerland but low end yes i'm not sure if you really need uh, watch from Switzerland without any health uh, points compared to a, an Apple or a Garmin watch. So you think that there should be an answer coming from Switzerland? I can ask you, you are Swiss. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we already have seen some answers and some of the watches, I think, uh, go in the right direction are more on uh, as a niche product. So Tag Heuer has come up with one, Hublot has come up with a solution, but they are really tiny in comparison to, to the Apple Watch. The big company, uh, Swatch Group, they also have just recently announced the Tissot Connected Watch, which is everything totally new. Also, they have much longer battery lo lifetime than a smartwatch, but they do not have anything in terms of health uh, features in there. And therefore, I'm not sure if that is really something what people are waiting for. 
Health is the health is the issue. Yeah, that's what we were talking about in our first discussions. That uh, we said, okay, right. smart this smart watch developments will will go in direction of health, and the more they put in there, more people will like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rene, thank you for the update. Um, as I said in the beginning, gray and gray as uh, the the weather outside here today. <laughs> um, let us uh, still uh, stay positive and think positive. The glass is always half full and I'm sure we will recover. I'm sure the industry will recover. Uh, the mechanical uh, higher end watches will stay uh, uh, requested and popular, I think, uh, through all ages in all countries. And I yes. assume people are also going to spend maybe more on watches than they did before because they have been saving money from not traveling or not being able to do things they probably could have done if there wouldn't have been those restrictions in moving around. When do you come to Switzerland next time? Um, as soon as I uh, know how my government will implement restrictions, um, they are going to announce this in the next days and then I will see uh, there's lots of work waiting for me in Switzerland. I have uh, lots of things to do, but uh, uh, as soon as the whole thing uh, seems feasible, I will be back, yes. Okay. Hopefully. Looking forward to see you in person again. Me too. Uh, René, thank you very much. Um, René, Welcome. a luxury analyst from Bank von Tobel in Switzerland for this update. Uh, uh, let's do our little up, uh, update next time in about two months. Is this okay? Two months, then we have a uh, Christmas period. So probably it's more three months. Three months. <laughs> let's uh, get in touch again uh, uh, at that time. And then uh, you will be able on uh, uh, listening to us uh, to get the next update. Thanks for watching. Rene Weber, thank you for joining me. Um, to all of you, uh, stay uh, safe and sound. And yeah, let's see you soon back again here on the Watch Advisor and YouTube. Bye-bye from Vienna and bye-bye, uh, Rene. Bye from Zurich. <laughs>